when the molecules are dissolved, we're separating them from one another due to the spool of the solvent particles. No bonds are going to break and the molecules are going to stay together. They will not break apart into ions. We're just putting space between the molecules as they become solvated. Solvated is dissolved. So here we have sucrose as a solid. When sucrose or sugar is put into water, it stays as sucrose molecules, but it's now dissolved in water. So here is a molecular representation of that. We have our sugar, in this case glucose, being put into water. Notice we still have glucose together. There's just space between those glucose molecules. This is different than dissociation, which is the separation into ions. Notice in this picture, we have sodium ions and chloride ions, and they're being pulled apart with water. Dissociation is the separation of an ionic solid into an aqueous ions. All your acids, bases, and salts will dissociate to some degree. In its dissociated form, ionic compounds are able to react because now they're in their ion form. They're not together. So an Dissociation equation would be I'm starting with a solid and it breaks apart into those two ions. And notice in solution, I have ions. I do not have any NaCl molecules together. And it's going to keep breaking them apart until the solution is saturated. When they're not dissolved or dissociated, the ions remain more attracted to each other. So if I add a ton of sodium chloride into the solution, then I may have some solid that's going to go to the bottom and stay together. We use solubility rules to know which ionic salts will dissociate. You will be provided a solubility chart, which looks like this on the top. You do need to know how to read this solubility chart, though. It says that these top ions are soluble. Unless they're paired with one of these. If you notice that all of these ions on this list are all negative ions, and the exceptions are where you see the positive ions. So what that means is these are soluble, so all acetates are soluble. There's no exceptions. All iodides are soluble unless it's paired with silver, mercury, or lead. On the bottom, these are all insoluble unless they're paired with these. For the most part, if you don't have a solubility rule, then you can assume the solution to be insoluble unless it's ammonium or alkali metal. All your ammonium and alkali metals will always break apart. Alkali and earth, remember, were your group 1A. So group 1A will dissolve in a salt. Salt being an ionic compound, metal and nonmetal. So let's look at a couple of these and see how to read the charts. So the first one, we have lead to chloride. So we look at the negative one, chloride. Find it on the chart. Chloride should be soluble unless it's paired with silver, mercury, or lead. Up, oh, lead's one of the exceptions, and so this will be not soluble. Okay, let's look at two more examples. The next one, we have ammonium. That's the only positive ion on the top. So it says that ammonium salts will always be soluble, no exception. So yes, that will be soluble. For the next example, we have calcium carbonate. So we find carbonate. Oh, carbonates are going to be insoluble unless it's paired with ammonium or group 1A or alkali metals. Calcium is in group 2A, so it is not an alkali metal, it's an alkaline earth metal. Therefore, this will not be soluble because all carbonates are insoluble unless they're paired with an exception. Go ahead and pause the video and try these next two on your own. Restart when you finish these next two. So we have chromate. We have the rule for chromate at the bottom. 
You could have solved it that way by saying chromates are insoluble, but this is an alkali metal, therefore it will be soluble. You also could have solved it if you recognize that you had a group 1A metal. All group 1A metals will be soluble, so I didn't need to look at the rules. If it's group 1A and it's ionic, it will be soluble. And then the next example, we have nitrates. All nitrates are soluble, and there's no exceptions. Therefore, it has to be soluble. I'm going to pause the video and do the last five on your own. Restart when you finish those five. So on the right, you should have gotten yes, yes, not soluble, yes, and not soluble. For the first one, all iodides are soluble except those three exceptions, and tin is not one of those, so it's soluble. The next one, all acetates are soluble, no exception. The next one, all sulfates are soluble unless it's with one of those four, and strontium is one of those exceptions. The next one, all group 1As are soluble or phosphates are insoluble unless they're with a group 1A, or ammonium. And the last one, all sulfites are insoluble unless they're paired with one of these, and strontium was one of those. So when things dissociate, they don't all dissociate in the same degree. When they dissociate into ions, they can conduct electricity, and that's what an electrolyte is. An electrolyte is a solution that is able to conduct a current due to the flow of electricity through the ions. So a non-electrolyte, notice, does not power the light bulb. And when I say power, it is able to transfer the charge through the solution. Sugar doesn't break apart into ions, so that charge can't be transferred. So it's a non-electrolyte. So the molecules only exist as molecules. They do not dissociate, they only dissolve. That's going to be your covalent and molecular compounds, such as CO2 and H2O. Weak electrolytes will dissociate a little bit. So some are going to dissolve, and some will break apart or dissociate. So notice the light bulb is now glowing dimly because some broke apart into ions. Those are going to be your weak acids and weak bases. Weak acids and weak bases only break apart a small amount. And then strong electrolytes are only going to dissociate. 100% of them will dissociate up until a certain point. So those are referred to as strong electrolytes because we're going to have lots of ions, therefore the electricity will flow freely. Those are your strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts. So you need to know your strong acids and strong bases because they are going to dissociate 100% and be strong electrolytes. If they're an acid or a base and not on this list, then they will only break apart about 5%. So you will need to memorize these lists. So your strong acids, you have three binaries, HCl, HBr, and HI, and you have four that have polyatomic ions nitric acid, perchloric, fluoric, and sulfuric acid. You notice on the periodic table, all of your strong acids that are binary are listed right there together. But notice HF, although it's a halogen, is not a strong acid. For your strong bases, your bases are going to end in hydroxide for our purposes right now and their group 1A hydroxides, and calcium, strontium, barium hydroxide. Radium hydroxide would also be a strong base, but it's radioactive, so we don't use radium hydroxide for anything. Same thing for ancium hydroxide, we wouldn't really use. So your group 1A hydroxides and group 2A hydroxides, but not beryllium and magnesium. So strong acids and bases break apart 100%. Weak acids and bases will break up less than 5%. So we say that they stay together, although they will dissociate a small degree, thus conduct a current to a small degree. But for our purposes in the next section, which is net ionic equations, weak acids and weak bases will stay together. So on this list, 
You're going to first decide if it's strong or weak, and then if it breaks apart or stays together. So HCl starts with hydrogen, so it's an acid. It was one of the seven strong ones. So it's a strong and it's strong acid. Therefore, it will break up. Because strong acids and strong bases break apart 100%. They're going to produce lots of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. The next one, magnesium hydroxide, it ends in OH, so it's a base. But magnesium was not on our list of strong bases, so it is a weak base. Therefore, it stays together. Go ahead and finish this list and restart when you have the answer to those eight problems. So this one should have been weak. Weak and weak. Because they were all weak, they will stay together. If it is not in group 1A or 2A and it's a hydroxide, it's got to be weak because the only way that it could be strong is if it was in group 1A or 2A. And be careful because HNO2 looks similar to one of our strong acids of HNO3, but more hydrogen or more oxygens is the strong acid. The less oxygens it has, the weaker it's going to be. Barium hydroxide was strong. HF we talked about, remember that it's weak. All the other HCl, HBr, and HI were the strong ones, but HF was weak. Sodium hydroxide was strong. Ammonium hydroxide is weak. This is a hydroxide, but it's not group 1A or 2A. You cannot look at solubility rules to say, oh, but that's ammonium, and ammonium always breaks apart. Only if it is a salt do you look at the solubility rules. You know it's a salt because it starts with a metal. And the last one is a strong. All your strong should have broken apart and all your weak stayed together. All right, so now we're going to ask if the following is going to break apart in an aqueous solution. Or if the majority of it will stay together. If it breaks apart, we're going to write the equation for what it breaks apart into. Remember that your strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts are what should break apart. All others, so insoluble salts, weak acids, and weak bases should stay together. So the first one, the first thing you've got to ask yourself, is it an acid, a base, or a salt? Well, that starts with sodium, and it doesn't have hydroxide. So that is a salt. So we look at the solubility rules. And all chlorides are soluble except those three. Sodium is not one of those three, so it should be soluble. You also know it's soluble because it's group 1A, and all group 1A salts are soluble. So when this breaks apart, you should have sodium ion and chloride ion. Mercury 1 chloride. So again, that's not an acid because it doesn't start with hydrogen, and it's not a base, it doesn't end in hydroxide. So looking at those solubility rules, all chlorides are soluble except silver, mercury, or lead. Well, this is mercury, so it does not break apart. The next one is hydroxide, so that's a base. So you have to look on the periodic table and say, is that one of my strong bases? It's not a strong base, so it does not break up. Go ahead and pause the video and try the last five on your own. Restart when you have answers for them. The next one was an acid because it started with hydrogen, but it was a weak acid, so it did not break apart. The next one is a salt. We know it's a salt because it doesn't start with hydrogen, and it doesn't end in hydroxide, and it has a metal and a polyatomic ion. So we look at our solubility rules, and according to the solubility rules, all acetates break apart. It breaks apart, it break apart into, two, into the two ions that made it up, which is potassium and acetate. So people get confused because they're like, but we just said all acetates break apart. Why didn't the previous one? Remember that if it's an acid, it does not follow the solubility rules. You have to say only strong acids break apart. This is a weak acid, that's why it didn't break apart. So the next example, it was a base because it ended in hydroxide. A strong base, 
therefore it breaks apart into K and hydroxide ions. When it breaks apart, it has to have a charge because it's breaking apart into ions. Silver bromide is a salt and silver bromide does not break apart according to the solubility rules because all bromides are soluble except silver lead or mercury. The last one, magnesium sulfate, is a salt and it should break apart as it is not one of the exceptions of sulfate always being soluble. Make sure that you memorize your strong acids and strong bases.